Welcome to block three of our Crazy Patch Block of the Month. Our technique for this month is lace. Included in your fabric kit is a length of narrow lace that can be used to embellish your blocks in several different ways. Much like the ribbon insertion that we explored last month, the lace can be used as a surface embellishment by stitching the lace across the fabric and trapping the raw ends in the seam allowance. For a more decorative effect, Try placing segments back to back with the straight sides touching so that you can create the illusion of a wider lace. You may want to balance the design elements from side to side so that it creates a more symmetrical illusion. These pieces can be stitched down by running a decorative stitch down the center that would travel from piece to piece and secure them both at the same time. To create a tuxedo effect, try inserting a piece of ribbon between your two pieces of lace, having all of the straight sides touching. Once again, these would be stitched down using a decorative stitch on your sewing machine that would travel from the lace to the ribbon and secure all the pieces at the same time. The ribbon that's been included in your kit was a satin ribbon. If you have extra pieces, feel free to include them here. The lace is narrow enough that you won't have to tack down the outer edges, although beads can be used for embellishment at a later point. The machine crocheted lace that I've selected for this project is more flexible than the satin ribbon. Therefore, you can use your steam iron and a bit of spray sizing like the Mary Ellen's Best Press, to create curves or random designs. To create this perfect curve, I used a standard CD as my template. I pressed the lace into shape on my ironing surface, spritzed it with the spray sizing, and allowed it to dry. Once it was cool, I transferred it to the fabric, and I've used a machine basting stitch to hold it in place. Now I will go back with a decorative stitch on my sewing machine and stitch along the spine to secure it in place permanently. Because the lace that we've chosen for this project is narrow, inserting it in the seam allowance requires some extra care. Aligning the straight edge of the lace with the raw edge of the fabric would trap a good portion of the decorative element inside the seam allowance. Therefore, what we need to do is mark a line. I've marked a line 1 8 inch from the raw edge, and I will use that to align the straight edge of my lace. Now, I used a black permanent marker so that you would be able to see it on camera. You need to use a number 2 pencil or perhaps a blue washable marker to draw the line on your fabric. Now that I have the base of mine aligned an eighth inch in, I'm going to use a machine stitch to base this in place before trapping it in the seam allowance. The lace that was provided with your kit is a machine made Clooney style lace. You have a world of options available if you would like to add a different kind of lace to your project. If you happen to have lace scraps at home, you may have a double edged lace which is perfect for spanning the center of a fabric piece. It's decorative on both edges and comes in a multitude of widths. A standard eyelet lace has a decorative edge and a raw edge. The raw edge is perfect for butting against your seam allowance and you have plenty of room between the raw edge and the decorative elements for your seam allowance. Lace comes in multiple widths and multiple sizes. You may want to add an extra wide to cover a variety of fabrics or perhaps something that's a little more dense to add a more decorative element. Search through your lace scraps and see what you have available. If you happen to have a gathered lace, you may find it easier to add by removing the base. Adding a gathered lace to your project will add all of this additional bulk into your seam allowance and will probably create a lump. However, if you look at the lace, you'll see that the machine stitching that adds this piece to it is added with a serger style stitching 
So if you just pull the stitches, you can easily remove the base and press your lace flat. This highly embellished lace is actually cut from yard goods. The back is this webbing and the top is this corded lace. It's most often seen in bridal and formal wear. For our particular project, cutting one design element out of this would create a raw edge and it's going to fray. This is intended to be used as a large piece of lace and not have the background cut away. Therefore, if you wanted to use it in our project, you would need to cover the entire piece of fabric with that style lace. Later, in the embellishing stage, after our blocks have been assembled into larger units, we will be adding decorative embellishments such as beads and buttons. You can easily add a decorative bead to the edge of each one of your lace pieces in order to tack it into place. You can also add beads along the decorative stitching, or you can use a bead to change the look of your lace by taking it and pulling it over to the opposite seam allowance and tacking it in place with a bead. It will create this ripple effect in your lace.